Once you can actually understand what the masculine and the feminine want out of a relationship and how to fulfill your side of it, then that's when the relationship can start to truly thrive. Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new around here, my name is Jills and I talk about all things feminine energy, self-improvement and wellness for women. So if that's something you wanna learn more about, be sure to hit the red subscribe button below as well as the notification bell so you don't miss when I put out any new videos. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing the masculine and feminine energy dynamics in a relationship and how you can be more in your feminine energy in your romantic relationships. If you want your relationship to be successful, if you want to maintain that spark and that passion even after many, many years, or even if you simply just want to attract the right person, it's really important to understand the energy dynamics that go into a relationship. So real quick, if you're new to masculine and feminine energy, be sure to watch this video right here when you're done. But quick recap, masculine energy is logical, purpose-driven, focused, competitive, protective. It's more of that doing energy, whereas feminine energy, on the other hand, is more intuitive, loving, nurturing, creative, receptive. It's more of that being energy. And everyone has both of these energies within us. And in general, not always, but in general, women tend to have just naturally a stronger feminine energy and men tend to naturally have a stronger masculine energy. And owning and accepting your own natural energy is what's gonna help you to feel the most aligned, feel the happiest and satisfied in your life and attract in the right relationships. Now, the thing with masculine and feminine energy is that they are like a magnet. It. They are naturally drawn to each other and they complement each other perfectly. And that polarity is what creates that attraction and spark and passion in your relationships. But what happens a lot of the times is that over time, these energies start to become a little bit wishy-washy. And that polarity, which drew you two together, initially it starts to fade. And this can lead to a lot of struggle and conflict and just feeling really unsatisfied in your relationship. And so what you'll most often see and what comes naturally to most people is that the man will bring the masculine energy to the relationship and the woman will bring the feminine energy to the relationship. But that's not always the case. Sometimes it's the man that brings the feminine energy and the woman that brings the masculine energy. And there's really no right or wrong as long as it works for you and you're honoring your own natural energy. But to keep that romance alive and thriving, you need those energy dynamics and that polarity. And you can even see this play out with same sex relationships as well. Usually one person in the partnership, they take on that more masculine role and the other person takes on that more feminine role. And that's because this is what makes relationships work. So in this video, I'm gonna be speaking in regards to the more traditional man is the masculine, woman is the feminine type of relationship because that is the most common and that is my audience. But if that's not you, you can still take this video and apply it to your situation because the energy dynamics are always still the same. Now, before I go into how you can be more feminine in your relationship, one of the most important things to understand, and this is probably the most important part of this video, honestly, is understanding the desires and fears of the masculine and the feminine. And once you can understand this, once you can both understand it and take it to heart, then your relationships will be so much better for it. It'll be a lot easier for you to fulfill your role in the relationship and make your partner feel loved. So when it comes to relationships, men more than anything want to be appreciated and respected. This is their biggest desire. Women, on the other hand, more than anything, they want to be loved and cherished. And consequently, a man's biggest fear is not measuring up, not being good enough, feeling criticized and shamed. A woman's biggest fear is feeling abandoned, not just physically, but emotionally as well. You know, feeling unsafe, feeling unseen, feeling ignored. So keep this in mind as you watch the rest of this video because you can kind of see how this plays out in almost everything that I talk about. So with that said, let me share some of the biggest things that you can do to be more in your feminine energy in romantic relationships. So if you want to be more feminine in your relationships, it's really important to be able to receive, but not just that, to be able to receive joyfully. I think a lot of people forget the second part. A masculine man loves to provide, loves to give, he lives for it, and it brings him immense pleasure. But if and only if it's actually appreciated and or brings some sort of happiness as a result. Clearly this is something that's very physically easy to do, but I think what happens a lot of times is that women resist this because maybe they think it makes them feel weak or they want their partner to know that they're a self-sufficient woman. But when a man gives, it's not because he doesn't think you're capable. He's not opening the door for you because he doesn't think you can do it yourself. He's not carrying the luggage to the car because he doesn't think you can do it yourself. It's because he doesn't want you to have to. 
It's a sign of love and respect. He likes to help and add value to your life. He wants to be useful to you. Remember, men think in a very practical way. And I mean, this could be as simple as receiving compliments graciously and joyfully. In a relationship, providing is the masculine and receiving is the feminine. And I know we wanna show our partners that we love and care for them, but as a feminine woman, over giving is not the answer. By receiving joyfully, you're allowing him to feel like the masculine man he wants to feel like. And the more you receive joyfully, even with those tiny little things, the more likely he's gonna wanna do more of it. The second way to be more feminine in your relationships is to let him feel needed in little ways. And this goes back to what I was just saying. A man loves to provide, he loves to give, it makes him feel good, he wants to feel needed. So let him feel that. And this is an especially great thing to do if your partner is struggling to kind of step into their masculine energy. For example, if I'm cooking dinner and I need to open a new jar, you know, I can't really do it myself just with my hands, but I can figure it out. I'm a self-sufficient woman. I can either bang it against the counter, sometimes that works, or I can put a knife in the top to release the suction. I can make it work easily. But whenever my husband is home and he's not busy, I always ask him to do it for me. And it sounds kind of silly, but he loves it and it makes him feel strong and manly. Yes, I could easily do it myself and I know that, but isn't it kind of nice when someone does it for me? Now, making him feel needed is not the same thing as being needy. Making him feel needed can be things like opening the jars, carrying the luggage down to your car, asking his advice on something, whereas being needy is not being able to function without him, not being able to make your own decisions, not being able to handle things on your own when you have to. So if you're not doing this yet, try to start incorporating this in tiny little ways and be grateful for his help. If he's a truly masculine man, this will make him feel good and it'll make you feel good too. The next way to be more in your feminine is to let your masculine shield down. Allow yourself to be more vulnerable and open with him. The masculine wants so badly for his feminine partner to open up to him and let him into your heart. A lot of times as we grow up in this very structured, masculine oriented world, or maybe we have difficult things that happen to us, we tend to build up this masculine armor around us because it makes us feel safe. But in a partnership, you have to be able to release that and let that go and open up to him and his energy. Now, of course, if you don't feel safe with this partner, Partner, or if you don't trust him, then that's something else entirely and that's something you need to reevaluate. But it's also really important to look deeper within yourself and be honest with yourself. Am I afraid to open up and be more vulnerable with him because he makes me feel unsafe? And in that case, or is it because you haven't healed past traumas or you haven't healed the things that are holding you back? Maybe it's past conditioning that taught you that you can't do that. You can't be open with people. A man can foster as much safety and trust into a relationship as humanly possible, but if you haven't taken care of your own individual stuff that's holding you back, then it doesn't matter what he does. You will always have a hard time with this and you're always going to feel uncomfortable. So if you want to be more in your feminine and create more of that polarity, start peeling away that masculine armor bit by bit. Start healing the things that you know that you need to. And if he has proven himself as trustworthy and safe, don't be afraid to allow him in. Fourth way to be more in your feminine and foster a healthy relationship dynamic is to be his safe refuge. A big quality of the feminine is their more nurturing, compassionate nature. And he wants to be able to fully be himself and relax around you without the fear of being criticized. As his romantic partner, you are one of the few people in his life that hopefully understands him on a deeper level. And especially if you're at the marriage level, you're there for the good and the bad. This doesn't mean that at the end of the day, he's just a lazy blob and crying into your arms every night. It just means that you allow him the space to open up to you without judgment. It means that when he's feeling down or stressed, you're there to encourage him, not nag him or criticize him. It means that at the end of the day, he's able to come home to someone who will enrich his life not make it harder. You don't have to solve his problems or fix them. That's his job. But as a feminine woman, you have this magical ability to instantly enable him to relax, let go, and get out of his head and into his body. I think a lot of women don't realize that just by being your innately feminine self, it brings him great peace. Another thing that you can do is to let him take leadership on things. In the depths of every truly feminine woman, we have a great desire to be able to just relax, take a breath, and know that things will get done. Start small. Maybe bring up the idea that it'd be fun if you planned a date night, or maybe let him handle the itinerary on your vacation. 
And once it's clear that that's his role and that's what he's taking charge on, be communicative about how excited and grateful you are that he's handling it. So many women want to control every aspect of their life, including their relationships. And you know, we want things to be perfect and we want things done the way that we want them to be done. And so we end up doing everything ourselves. But most of the time, this just stems from a place of fear. If you trust your partner, which you should be able to do, let him take charge sometimes. Let yourself lean back and also let yourself be accepting and forgiving of that one time in which he will inevitably mess up or things won't end up perfectly. Or if he decides to do something different than how you would have done it. Life doesn't have to be that serious. Let him in, let yourself receive, and let him lead even just in small little ways. Give yourself the gift of being able to take a step back every now and then and surrendering. He'll feel good and so will you. The sixth way to be more feminine when it comes to romantic relationships is to embrace your nurturing side. I feel like I probably don't have to explain this one as much because it's kind of self-explanatory, but one of the main qualities of the feminine, especially in relationships, is their ability to nurture. When we are able to actually lean back more in our relationship and receive more, we will have much more energy and a stronger desire to nurture others. And this will come much more naturally to us. But if we're not doing those other feminine parts of the relationship, like leaning back and receiving, and if we're not prioritizing our own rest and our own self-care, then nurturing will feel exhausting. It won't feel good. So if you're a feminine woman and nurturing feels exhausting to you, don't forget about those other feminine parts of the relationship because they all go together. And don't forget to nurture yourself too. Also make sure you don't confuse nurturing with mothering. Treat him as your respected partner who has his own life, his own opinions. Don't take over and treat him like a child. Next, embrace your playfulness and sensuality. The masculine likes to get things done. They're usually more structured, more rigid, more up in the mind, they tend to thrive off of things like structure and consistency. So being a bit more playful and sensual adds so much more vibrancy and juiciness to his life. And not to mention it makes your life more exciting too. Again, one of the feminine's deepest desires is to be able to relax and lean back and have their partner be there. And so when you're able to actually do this, it's so much easier to tap into that playful and sensual side of you. Let yourself see the little joys of life. Let things not be so serious all the time. Laugh more, get into your body more, gently touch your partner more. Be conscious of all five senses as you go about your day. The masculine is magnetized to this playful and sensual energy and it will be life-giving to you as well. Another way to be more feminine and have stronger polarity between the two of you is to have your own life. This one's so important. Have your own passions, have your own hobbies, have your own friends. Let him miss you, let yourself miss him. One thing that I've noticed that can be really common in relationships and especially when you get really close is that your lives become so intertwined that you don't give each other the space and the distance to be your own person, to come back to yourself. It's important to spend time with your girlfriends and feed off of their feminine energy to help activate that and increase that. Just like it's really important for your masculine partner to be around other men and have a strong community of men to increase their own masculine energy. And at the end of the day, you're both gonna come back to each other feeling so much more restored and refreshed and your relationship will be better for it. Now, when it comes to feminine energy, specifically in relationships, one thing that I want you guys to remember is this. Don't be feminine just to please him. Be feminine for yourself. At the end of the day, this is for you. And if you are an innately feminine woman, which is probably you if you're watching this, being more in your feminine will feel life-giving to you. It'll feel so satisfying. You'll probably have so much more energy and a much stronger zest for life. Will this benefit your relationships and probably make your partner happier? Yes, and that's wonderful. But at the end of the day, you need to remember that you're doing this for yourself. Now in a relationship, it takes two to tango. It's a partnership. Just like you need to be stepping into your feminine, your man needs to be stepping into his masculine. But if he isn't owning his true masculine nature and stepping into that, what happens a lot of times is the feminine feminine partner without even thinking about it starts stepping into that role because somebody has to do it. Somebody has to lead. But I encourage you to be very careful with doing this because once you do, that doesn't allow him the space to step into that anymore. The more that you embrace your feminine and just own it and become confident and comfortable with it, the more that this will encourage him to step into his masculine nature. But at the end of the day, you can't force it. He's the one that has to decide he wants to step into that role. And again, being more in your feminine, this is for you, not for him. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to know whether you agree or disagree. As long as you are kind, feel free to share. But besides that, if you haven't seen these videos right here, you 
might want to check them out because they'll probably be really helpful for you. I will see you next time in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!